Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up on Roku or in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, one of the lessons I have learned over the years is that whatever your thoughts before, let's say, an NFL football season is played, whoever you think is strong or weak, you have to readjust that thinking based on what actually happens once the season starts. Many people don't. Many in the media don't. But there's an opportunity here, and our goal, as always, is to beat the casino. Now, right now, incredibly, the Kansas City Chiefs are 3-0. Whatever you thought of the Chiefs before the season, just understand that when a team starts the season 3-0, they have an excellent chance of making the postseason. Also, I know there are a bunch of Denver Bronco betters out there right now who are looking firmly at that AFC West and who now realize that their team, who they got at awful odds, is actually right now facing competition for the division. Right? And understand how crazy the odds were at the beginning of the season. Denver you were getting much less than even money odds on Denver to win the division. And let me just tell you, Denver right now has big injuries to key players like Ryan Clady. Right? Von Miller right now suspended for a few more games. We've seen more of Champ Bailey wearing street clothes than we have him wearing a Denver Bronco uniform. Also, are you really impressed right now? And I'm talking to you fantasy football types with what Monty Ball has done his rookie season at running back. And are you really that confident <clears throat> in Hillman and Noshawn Moreno? Right now, let me just say too, isn't it true that the best back on either the Denver Broncos or the Kansas City Chiefs is Jamal Charles? If you don't believe me, just look up his career rushing average. Well, my point is simply this. <clears throat> Kansas City at 3-0 still has home games against the Oakland Raiders and the Cleveland Browns. Right? The Raiders have a rookie quarterback. I know Terrell Pryor's looked good, but let's face it. How many of you are chomping at the bit to pick the Oakland Raiders in any road game? As for the Cleveland Browns, they just traded Trent Richardson. If that's not waving a white flag, I don't know what is. Let's just say they traded Trent Richardson, and it's not like they have Adrian Peterson on the roster. right? Now, keep in mind, KC also has some winnable road games. The Oakland Raiders. right? The Washington Redskins. I have Redskin fans as friends. The conversation is about RG3. Is he healthy? Should Kirk Cousins come in? Some big names, Tony Dungy, have opined publicly that the team would be better off sitting RG3. But isn't the real issue with the Redskins their defense? You know, you'd be hard pressed to find a team with worse defensive numbers. Then they make the Philadelphia Eagles look like an offensive juggernaut week one. Then they make the Green Bay Packers look like an offensive juggernaut week two. You know, if you take Aaron Rodgers' numbers from just the first half of that game against the Redskins, well, those numbers are great numbers for a four-quarters game. Aaron Rodgers simply wasn't stopped in that first half, right? The Redskins defense, folks, is a big problem for the team. 
while you're thinking about who plays quarterback for the Redskins, just understand that when that offense leaves the field, not much is on the field playing defense. Right? Understand that KC plays the Redskins in Washington. That's a winnable game. Also, as much as E.J. Manuel has surprised all of us in Buffalo, E.J. Manuel remains a rookie quarterback. I believe KC in Buffalo has a chance at winning that game. Right? My point is simply, at 3-0, if you didn't give the KC Chiefs a thought before now, just the fact that they're 3-0 and really demands your attention. Now let's talk about the real world and let's talk about football futures for a moment. You know, in the real world, you'd be considered a genius. If you bought stock in a company, right, some ongoing company, Hell, that stock, it doubled, it tripled, it quadrupled, and then you got out at a profit. There's no harm in selling early at a profit. You can do that the rest of your life and do okay, right? Some will say, hey, you sold too early. What do you care? There's more money in your bank account now than there was when you bought the stock. Right? The point is, in the real world, we expect people to hit the exit ramp on stocks. If I own Google today, that doesn't mean I'm going to own Google 30 years from now. It just means that I believe in the company today. And if the company makes a profit and the stock appreciates, and I'm able to get out with some extra money in my bank account, then I have realized my opportunity cost, right? I've actually done okay. You know, so too it is in sports. I don't know why people look at NFL futures and think that the team actually has to deliver on the actual prop. In other words, if I take a team to win the Super Bowl, just like in the real world where I can sell that bet at any time if it gets me a profit, why can't I do that with football futures? In other words, if I have a chance to double, triple, quadruple my money, even without the team winning the Super Bowl, why wouldn't I take that team to win the Super Bowl if I can get outsized odds? Now, incredibly, the 3-0 Kansas City Chiefs, this morning, September 20th, 2013, are 25 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. Think about it. 25 to 1. In the real world, I'm a genius if I can double my money in the stock market in a matter of, let's say, three, four months. Here, the casinos are offering me 25 to 1 odds. Now understand how I think you should play it. If you take a position in the Chiefs, and let me just say for the record, I don't expect them to win the Super Bowl. But if you take a position in the Chiefs at 25 to 1, and they're 3-0, and 0, right? 25 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. If the Chiefs make it to the playoffs understand that you can hedge out of the bet because you're getting such leverage let's say the Chiefs make it to the playoffs let's say their first game is against some juggernaut team that wasn't the first or second seed in the conference let's say it's against the Houston Texans in Houston right let's say that Houston's a minus 300 on the game. Let's say I have five bucks to win five times 25. $125. Folks, that's how ridiculous the odds are right now on the Kansas City Chiefs to win the Super Bowl, right? Just five bucks. Understand that when they play Houston that first game, if Houston's a three to one favorite, a minus 300, I can just bet 15 bucks on Houston to win five. 
right? If Houston wins, guess what? I've lost nothing after having participated in a play that could have netted me $125. Now for the math types out there, let's get a little bit deeper. Let's say since I'm getting 25 to 1 odds on one side of the bet, let's say now KC is playing Houston in the first round of the NFL playoffs. Why would I stop at betting 15 bucks on Houston at 3 to 1? Now I can bet 30 bucks on Houston at 3 to 1. Right? So if Houston beats KC in that first game, guess what? I've actually made five bucks off the entire process. I had KC at huge odds, right? They lost their first playoff game. First playoff game out the gate. And off the entire transaction, I've actually made five dollars. Right? Now let's get deeper. Let's say that KC wins that first game. Guess what? I'm still in play. I've given back some of my anticipated winnings on the 25 to 1. But I still have a chance to win the rest of the bet. And now, of course, KC is that much closer to winning the conference. Let me go one step further. Let's say I'm lucky. Let's say that KC is actually one of the top two seeds in the playoffs. And keep in mind, I'm talking about a team that's already 3-0. They already have the record jump on most of the teams in the NFL. Well, understand, I'm looking at 25-1 to leverage, and KC would only have to win two games to win the conference. Right? So my point is simply, if you're a futures better, whether you think KC is going to win the AFC or not, Given that they're 3 and 0 oh, and you're getting 25 to 1 odds right now, go to vegasinsider.com to look at the odds. Go to any of these sites that offer NFL futures. Given that the casinos are giving you that much leverage on a team like this, I believe it's worth a look. Let's go one step further. Let's go a little bit out the box. This week, the New York Giants are traveling to Carolina to play Carolina, right? Both teams are 0-2. We all know going to 0-3 is perilous, right? 0-3, good luck making the playoffs of this competitive league. So this is really a must-win game for both teams. Here's what I want you to consider, and understand that game in Vegas is listed as a pickup. Right? But just understand that nobody has stopped the Giant offense other than the Giants. I know the Giants can't run the ball, but two-time Super Bowl MVP Eli Manning is an elite passer. Right, They lost week one against the Cowboys. I encourage you to look at the offensive numbers. Keep in mind, Giants had a bevy of turnovers. Bevy of turnovers. They still ended up with 500 yards of total offense. Look at Eli Manning's numbers from last week. Look at the passing yards. Now all I'm saying here is that the Giants are a team that are explosive offensively. Right? Now an argument can be made that Carolina wins this game. An argument can be made that the Giants win this game. But understand that everyone last week lost in the NFC East, right? All four teams. The Giants didn't lose any ground last week. Now, if the Giants win this game, and this is a game in which, let's face it, Tom Coughlin is a Super Bowl winning coach. Ron Rivera is not, right? Eli Manning is an experienced quarterback who's won multiple Super Bowls. Cam Newton has not been to a Super Bowl, right? I would say the experience favors the Giants in the game. Now, if the Giants win, just understand that next week, 
the Giants play the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, if you're a strategic better, figuring out who plays who and trying to maximize your odds, think about it. You can get the Giants right now at 40 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. That's even more preposterous than the Kansas City Chiefs play. You can have both the Giants and the Chiefs at 25 to 1 and 40 to 1. They play each other next week. If the Chiefs win that game and the game's in Arrowhead, the Chiefs would be 4 and 0. Oh. At that point, when you already be getting dividends from getting the 25 to 1 position today, if the Giants win that game after beating Carolina, should they beat Carolina? They'd be 2 and 2. They'd be in the mix in the NFC East with still a juggernaut offense, with still a wide receiving core that's the envy of most teams in this league. Victor Cruz, excellent wide receiver. Hakeem Nix, probably has more talent than Victor Cruz. Don't sleep on the third guy, Ruben Randall, who might have more talent than both of them. Second year player. A knucklehead at times, but immensely talented. Right? The point is, just like with a stock, just like with the stock market, you have betting startups in the National Football League. Some of them have experienced winners, like Tom Coughlin, like Eli Manning. Right? And the point is simply, somebody's got to win next week's Chiefs-Giants game. Right? If it's Andy Reid and the Chiefs, then you're 4 0. What are the odds of losing out on the playoffs then, especially with this Chiefs schedule? Two games against Oakland, a game against Cleveland, a game against Washington, a game against Buffalo. Right? Should the Chiefs lose and the Giants are 2 and 2, guess what? You're in play at 40 to 1 odds. Right? So don't sleep on NFL futures. Most of us are trying to just get by weekly in games in which we're getting minus 110 lines, right? Break even lines, right? Bet 10 to win 9 lines. Well, what if I told you there's a betting market out there that's offering 25 to 1 on a 3 and 0 team with the opportunity for you to hedge the play later in the season? Right? Just to let you know how crazy the whole thing is. <clears throat> the Denver Broncos right now are 4-1 to one favorites to win the Super Bowl. 4-1. to one. Do you think a team that just lost Ryan Clady, that has had the injuries they've had, are a short thing to win even the AFC? I don't. You know... So for you 4 to 1 Denver betters, even if you have a position on Denver, <clears throat> why wouldn't you hedge the play with your chief rival in your own division at 25 to 1 with the 3 and 0 Kansas City Chiefs? As I've said, I don't expect Kansas City to win the Super Bowl. But you'll have an opportunity to make a profit well before that game is played. Thanks for watching.